Hello guys and welcome to episode 14 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign. Caesar in Gaul playing as the Romans. Today we're going to be continuing where we left off with the rebel army that we attacked from Berdigala. Um, we have a reasonably good army. We have about four units of legionaries we can make use of. We have the uh, veteran legionaries and a lot of Vigile. So we completely outnumber the enemy but they do have some quite good units so we are going to have to take this on um, take this carefully especially if i'm waiting on reinforcements for a little while anyway with no further ado let's move straight onto the battle map so the current weather's dry we are going to leave it at that um, our reinforcements are actually coming in behind us, so that's uh, very useful actually, especially if the enemy decides to approach onto us. So it's going to allow me to get all my men into positions uh, that will be um, more adv advantageous for me. If the uh, reinforcements were coming from behind the enemy, that could be annoying because I would have two broken up armies when I really need all my men together. Uh, so let's just get all my men over here. Let's not worry about formation for now. And as soon as my reinforcements get in, then we can sort we can sort out my actual battle formation. Our reinforcements have arrived. So luckily they're not delayed. You can get all of these legionaries together to make our front line. At speed. They can then be supported by the Vigiles on either side. Vigiles. So that'll do. And we can do the same on the other side. And then the rest, well, they can occupy the parts in the middle. I need to really work out what I haven't used, so I'm just going to quickly fast forward it. The enemy is probably already approaching me. So, make sure that I'm in the right position. Select all of my skirmishes and we'll group them. And we can get the uh, plebs to be behind and more vigilates on each flank I think would be a good idea with the uh, levy freemen Celtic skirmishers on the left flank and more vigilates we can just put them in the middle so what I'm gonna do is just lock this formation and begin to move forwards I'm not entirely sure where the enemy is at the moment so let's create a group and uh, lock the formation and that is about right <laughs> although it's a bit derpy um, that'll do and we can start to move the army forwards so I'm not entirely sure where they are normally the enemy advances on you even if you're defending which is what's kind of confusing me alright let's move on the other side of this building Hopefully we won't be caught out while moving our army. They might not be moving at all, to be honest. Oh, there they are. Looks like they're just repositioning to face me. Interesting. All right, we're going to put our army right in their face and uh, maybe they'll advance upon me. If they don't, well, I'll just have to uh, get my men to move forwards. So we're going to put it to normal now. And I'm going to begin to advance with my legionaries. They are going to unleash the savage dogs onto me, so that's going to be interesting. Vigilates to move forwards on the left and these ones on the right Double 
Warriors! Get my skirmishers up. Maybe I'll be able to use the skirmishers on the savage dogs before they unleash them. That will uh, kill off a lot of them before they even get into the fight. Okay, so nearly in position. I'm going to move forwards the legionary line so that we can get the skirmishes into range. And that will likely trigger them to release the dogs. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to make them a separate group. Warriors, move out. I can control it's them properly. And here we go. Like I said, as I get my skirmishers into range, they are going to be forced to attack me. Take him. Our hidden units have been discovered. So we engage a heavy horse on the left with my Vigilays. I'm going to get one unit to go behind them. On the right we can't really do that. I can rapid advance into the back of them. Get my men to move forwards there. There we go, side charge with the rapid advance. General is under attack. These Vigilates to move forwards and join in the fight. They can bulk up the center formation. Can inspire this unit of Vigilates so it doesn't rout. The battle is turning in our favor. General's fighting me on the left. Good, because that's where the majority of my forces are. I'm going to push forwards here. Would be nice to have some infantry, but I'm just going to use these uh, legionaries here to push forwards and take out these skirmishers. And then I'm going to get my general to line up behind the Oathsworn and charge into the back of them. And these legionaries can outflank the right Jupiter gives us strength so, lovely job there used all its ammunition skirmishers seem to have uh, been making uh, quite a lot of shots they are low on ammunition, so hopefully they killed quite a lot. Going to get these um, units to come in and completely crush Oath Sworn. They routed, and so has the last heavy horse. So we're going to end the battle there. Decisive victory: 523 losses for us and 944 for the enemy. The majority of our losses are probably just Vigilays, which isn't a big issue at all. But hopefully we've crushed the Rebellion there with that one fight. We'll have to wait and see. Let's go ahead and kill the captives and find out. Yep, the army is completely dead. So that works out well. Hopefully the happiness is still good in Berdigala. No, it's not. My god. Um... Really, really not good. It's going to go to a rebellion again this turn. And, well, in the meantime, I'm actually going to head towards Sotium with the 5th Legion because Berdigala can pretty much defend itself. I just don't want the defenders of Endo Vesalicus attacking that again. I think the reason why it's why it's rebelling is because they actually raided the lands and that's caused, it, caused a massive rebellion, basically. Um... 
for a military edition, let's give them a plus three weapon damage inflicted by all units. And now finally, it looks like we're going to be able to get the first legion with Caesar to go and take out Ellen Barris. The way is blocked. So we'll destroy the champions of Trebaruna on the way, force them back to their settlement, At once. and then we can hit Ellen Barris and wipe them out once and for all. So we got a huge garrison army of Iberian swordsmen, Iberian tribesmen, and Iberian skirmishers. These skirmishers will be really annoying. Uh, but then we also have a couple of stray armies, and of course the flaming swords of Nito, which are actually defending the settlement itself. So quite a lot of um, general units, but uh, my legionaries should outrank or outclass them completely. Either way, let's find out how it goes and assault this one on the battle map. So we're going to keep it dry, and I'm going to select all my legionaries, just line them up for now. I'm going to have a look at the settlement, see where would be best to attack from. It's probably the top here, these couple of uh, areas. Um, I'm likely just to squish my army through this area and through this area, and then form up here and push onto their main square. That would probably be the best way to do it. So I'm going to get my men, um, four units here. Four units here. And um, we'll get the skirmishers to go on one side, the warriors to go on the other. Uh, the light horse can just stay here. We can get the ornicas and ballistas over here. Don't think they're going to be able to fire anything from the off. Uh, we've got a couple of units of uh, scorpions that we can make use of. Um, don't think ha don't think they're going to be very effective. Um, but we'll wait and see. So let's start the battle. Get our men to advance. It looks like the scorpions are going to fire onto this Iberian tribesman unit, so that's pretty interesting. And holy crap, that's a lot of men running there. Are they just like coming out to attack me? What's going on there? Oh well, if they are then so be it. <laughs> I think that will be to my advantage to be honest. Make sure that my legionaries start advancing as well. These scorpions must be getting a lot of impaling shots. Wow, these explosive rounds are going to be getting a lot of damage done to the enemy. So we're going to sprint these legionaries on this side. We need to make sure that we get our skirmishers up. Let's just run forwards now. Start attacking the enemy. Our hidden units have been discovered. I think because I had so much artillery, they just decided to just run straight at me. That is going to do a lot of damage to them. I need to make sure that my cavalry go over to the left so I can chase around their skirmish units. The men are wavering. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, some Scutari cavalry came around the back and and destroying my. They're destroying my ballistas. Oh my god, how did I not see that? That's so bad. The battle is turning in our favor. That's annoying. I'm probably going to lose my ballistas completely because of that. I'm going to charge into the back of the Scutari cavalry now, though with my light horse and hopefully that will uh, stop them. Trouble is with Scutari cavalry is that they're good against horsemen <laughs> so that kind of sucks. Let's, let's send back one of my legionary units just to clean that up. It looks like I'm gonna lose both of my units of artillery which is gonna suck. Let's chase down these men with my cavalry as well in the form of my general. Our men flee the field of our general is under attack. So there go my Ornigas. That's really annoying. Oh, is that like oh it's the reinforcing. Oh, I completely forgot about that. They like baited me into attacking them all in 
in the centre, and the I completely forgot about the uh, reinforcing troops that are scheduled to arrive. Anyway, Legionary is going to be charging in now. Coming out of hiding almost. And running into this melee. So, that should help out a lot. I unfortunately lost both of my units of um, artillery, which is quite embarrassing. Looks like all of their garrison forces have routed though now that my general caught up with them going to just assign units for them to chase and over here we just need to uh, kill off the reinforcements and we should be good so I'm going to just run them down it's unfortunate that I did lose my ornigas and my ballistas to that I'm actually quite annoyed Bloody AI. Always doing tricky things. Scorpions. Gonna be my only artillery now. It's gonna make it annoying to attack walled settlements with this army. But well, you gotta give the AI some credit for that. <laughs> it was, um, did catch me out completely. I'm just gonna get a couple of, uh, units into the centre here, capture it, because I think there's still some more reinforcements that need to arrive. Stop chasing with those men as well. The rest of them can all just basically move towards the centre now. So we've got some veteran shield warriors. Ah, okay. And they're going to be running straight into my Celtic Warriors. Let's see how this goes. Oh, my guys are going to frenzy. All right. So I should absolutely annihilate them. They're going to die so quick. Especially with the frenzy on. Hopefully they'll just break or rout and then we can run them down as they try and run away. She's going to get my general to come round. It's probably the quickest unit that can actually come to support. Not sure they'll be needed. Although well, they are evening out the numbers. So this could change at any moment, especially now the uh, frenzy's worn off. Unlike cavalry at the other end of the entire map. Okay, one unit of legionaries to head this way, Warrior! just in case. It looks like the uh, Celtic skirmishes, or Celtic warriors, sorry, aren't being beaten back. But uh, my general is going to arrive and save the day. this do? George! Oh my god, do you see that horse? <laughs> Crazy. No! Right, now we can turn around the uh, Celtic Warriors and kill off the rest of these Shield Warriors. The Shield Warriors are Orders. basically completely broken up. And I put Loyalty of the 10th onto uh, this unit. And that is going to be enough to break them. So we're going to continue there. And hopefully kill the general in this unit. I think we already did. But we'll just make sure. And that way the army will completely die. The enemy general ah, there we go. is dead. So that's job done. So we're going to quit the battle there. Decisive victory. 462 losses for us. And 1,942 for them. And that's going to give us command of Ellen Beres. So we did lose our Ornigas, but we didn't lose the Ballistas. That really doesn't make sense. Um, the Ballistas 
must have ran away or something. I have no idea. Anyway, we managed to annihilate the majority of the armies. Uh, so we are going to just go ahead and occupy Ellen Barris. Um Probably wouldn't have made much of a difference, whatever I did. Mainly Commander. due to the fact that we're already in such negative regard this turn anyway. Uh, let's convert this. Actually, probably just yeah, dismantle it all. It's probably the best thing to do. I don't know why these are taking so long to uh, convert. It just seems really annoying. See, if I uh, say do that again, it's going to take 10 turns. Like, what the hell is that about? Let's just go ahead and dismantle it. Probably be easier. Quicker. 100 times quicker. This one as well. Cancel the construction. And um, dismantle it. Uh, so that'll be that. And in here we can build... Probably just a quarry would be a good idea, just to get some more money. Because we're going to have all the happiness buildings we can make anyway. Um, this field of Mars is probably going to be useful, so I'm going to keep it there. Ready even though if it does uh, affect our happiness. Hopefully the uh, Rebellion won't turn up in Aquetar Bellicade. That would be a big issue. Uh, but we can possibly raise an army here just in case. Gonna get Marcus Antonius to uh, make a army of veteran legionaries there for this turn, and I might just recruit some mercenary Italian spearmen just in case. It will prevent a rebellion army from taking over a settlement in the first turn. But now I'm tempted to use uh, the 5th Legion to take out the defenders of Ender Velicus. I think that might be a good move. And I can, I'll can i probably have the move, movement points to move straight back into Sotum anyway, so I'll probably take advantage of that. I'm just going to force them away and I don't think I'm in range now to attack them. But maybe the 3rd Legion is. And maybe the 3rd Legion can move out. Yes, they can. So yeah, we'll use the 3rd Legion instead to destroy the defenders of Endo. Velicus. And I'm probably just going to auto resolve this because it is such a huge advantage. Uh, so we're going to go with an aggressive stance. And that will rid myself of that enemy in my province. So that would be nice. Decisive victory will kill the captives. And the Alski are destroyed. So that works out nicely. You can also get the third legion back into Devona. So even better. Um, what I mustn't forget to do is now that I own all of Aquitania, surely I can put a edict there. Oh, I can't because I've used too many. So maybe it's worth taking them off my home provinces now. I don't think I need the Bread and Games edict here anymore. Uh, so you can get rid of that. And we can place it over here instead. So we'll do that. And that will give us plus 4 food, plus 10% wealth generated from agricultural buildings, plus 1 growth per turn, and plus 4 public order. That will be nice. Okay. So that's that. Let's have a look at Naeus Varenius Ilius. He can upgrade his skills. Probably go with more philosophy so we get extra cultural conversion. And I'll begin to move him towards Aquitania. Uh, that way, once he's finished in Narbonensis, he can just skip the border and help out with the cultural conversion on this side. My spy can continue up uh, through France. And we found Cenobum. Great. And we can move on from there to find more of the Gallic factions. So that's everything done for this turn, I believe. So let's move straight on to the next one. So this is the rebel army that spawned this turn. They're going to attack me straight away, which is strange. And we've got um, one unit of um, swordsmen. Okay, I guess I'll just have to auto resolve this then. There's no point in really fighting that, I'll just surround him and kill him. Oh well, there goes that rebel army. 
never really seen a rebel army suicide that like that before. Seems a bit pointless. Anyway, let's kill the captives. And um, yeah, the rebellion's already dead, so we won't have to worry about that this turn. We've got uh, Gaius Octavius Flavus has increased to rank five in the army, and we've also got uh, Gaius Cassius Longinus increasing to rank three. We've got mission successful. Uh, I think that's for capturing and maintaining four different provinces. So now we have to maintain 50 units in total. Uh, so we got a nice in injection of cash there. Uh, we've also got a new objective issue to control 15 settlements either by direct ownership or through states and military allies. So we actually have how many? We've got four here, four here. Uh, we got two more there. Actually, no, that's one more. So that's um, nine. Then we got uh, four back at here. So that's 13, uh, 14, 15. So we've already got 15 settlements. So we're probably going to get another load of cash next turn as well, which will be nice. Um, okay, let's upgrade this veteran. Uh, we can't really upgrade his training anymore. So we shall go instead. Uh, with, let's see, let's go with Champion just to get us the extra campaign map movement range uh, because he will be accompanying the general for the rest of his life. Uh, war declared, the ADI and the Swaby, and we got a construction report, um, it's suburbia being finished in Medlan, can that be upgraded anymore? Can be. Uh, to an amphora maker or a brick maker, but we don't actually have the technology for that yet. Uh, but hopefully once we get through the infrastructure, we will learn to make that. Yep, there with the advanced construction techniques. And then we can start to make lots of money. So if it's only going to go down by minus six this turn, um, there's probably no need for these mercenaries anymore. So let's uh, disband those. Uh, we can get my general to actually move into the settlement and we can start to make all of these temples that I had intended to make. Uh, we can also go for some more villas I think and the reason I'm going to do that is because I have the Brennan Games Edict here that is actually increasing or will increase the amount of money I make from agriculture once I've upgraded the consecrated grounds. At least I think that's what happen. Actually, let's make uh, one of these a quarry instead, just so that we have that money straight away. So that'll be good. Um, we're going to upgrade to a manipula barracks so I can actually recruit some men in this province. And it's also going to be worth getting a military wharf here, I believe, so it can start recruiting a nice navy that will be able to push up the left side of France. Uh, we got the edict issued, we got an outraged populace of course and an unhappy populace. Okay, so that's that. We can upgrade this to a cohort barracks, I may as well go ahead and do it now that I have the a decent amount of money. Um, I'm going to upgrade this to a temple of Minerva so we get the plus 8% wealth generated from industrial buildings. Although we don't actually have any industrial buildings. Oh well, we get extra research rate anyway. And public order, so that's not an issue. Um, and I'm probably going to go with a fishing port as well. Although we are pretty good for food right now. Not sure. Might be worth getting a harbour for more money. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave it. Hold on to the cash like I did before. Um, this army... It needs to be taken out of Force March Stance, so we can actually recruit some men. So we're going to go ahead and get some Legionary Cavalry. And then we can have another decent army. We need to increase our armies in Aquitania as well. So let's get some uh, Legionaries into this army. And this one really needs to disband these Vigilators because they're actually completely useless. 
and we can actually upgrade the general skills so we'll do that we can make him a warrior he has been fighting on the front line quite a lot so far so that can be his new trait all right meanwhile we're going to move the first legion up towards Berdigala, and this way uh, he'll be in a position to move further north and hit some new Gallic nations. Ready for orders. So the third legion's fine. They're still replenishing. And we can continue to move the spy onwards. And that's about it. So, it's likely that once my armies have built up, I will be attacking into new Gallic nations, but unfortunately, not in this episode, because it has been my time. So, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Another few nice battles. It was good to finally get the Alski out of the way, and actually destroy them completely. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.